everyone this is mehul mehta and welcome back to my youtube channel today we have a very special guest his name is akshay joshi so akshay graduated from vit university back in 2018 me and akshay we are we are very good friends so akshay did his engineering in mechanical and from being a mechanical engineer he switched into quantitative finance so let's understand his journey so welcome akshay to this podcast and uh, uh, hi, yeah can uh... Yeah, yeah, can yeah. you so nice can you tell you. us about your story? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so as Mehul said, uh, we are both from VIT University, Vellore. Uh, we both passed out in twenty eighteen. Uh, after that, I got a job in. Uh, so I because I am a mechanical engineer, I tried to apply for all uh, core companies for mechanical engineering. So I worked in Johnson Controls initially for three years as a core mechanical engineer. Uh, but once i started working after a few months in the job i was drawn more towards finance because once you start earning your salary you also want to know uh, where to invest your salary that's how i wanted to know more about finance and i got uh, introduced to this cfa exam uh, i started coaching for cfa exam in pune and during that i met my mentor and uh, he guided me that you should try to pursue this field called quant finance uh, in the us Uh, why quant finance? Basically, because uh, I was drawn to more towards finance, so I started uh, reading more about finance, about investments from all CFA knowledge I had, fixed income derivatives, uh, and then I sort of uh, thought of connecting the dots. So mechanical engineering, you learn a lot of maths for uh, three, three and a half years. So I wanted to connect the dots between the two, like say mathematics and statistics from mechanical engineering and finance, which I learned uh, basic finance, which I learned from CFA level one. So that's why I thought that pursuing quant finance would be a very good field for me. Right, right. So thank you, thank you, Akshay, for your background. Uh, can you tell us, like, um, so you joined Rutgers University, right? So why did you choose Rutgers University to pursue your masters in quant finance? So, like, uh, as you would know, uh, mostly we would we go through the content rankings and risk net rankings, which is what I did. uh other than that uh, i also looked at the fees of each program uh, tried to connect with uh, as many alumni as possible uh, for me 60 70000 dollars was a ballpark because that is what uh, my parents were able to sponsor me and i didn't want to take any loan uh in that range i think the two universities which clicked for me were nc state university which you went to and rutgers uh, uh, mqf program uh and georgia tech was also pretty nice but i felt it is a bit coding heavy and me being not a coder uh, i thought a university where the coding is slowly introduced into the program like rutgers would be a good choice for me uh, i got acceptance from uh, most universities uh, nyu fire program uh, rutgers mqf program georgia tech program and nc state program these were my main uh, acceptances but then uh, later on going through the program uh wondering about the fees uh i remember nyu fre uh, program fees were a bit on a higher side during that time plus living cost in new york and then uh mostly i was going for the nc state but then i realized that it i also want some finance in my masters and i also want some coding where like in rutgers they teach you c++ and python from scratch like uh, assuming that you are not a coder so that's that was the main reason for me to choose rutgers uh, the another important reason was its proximity to new york city so finding an internship finding a job would be easier most of my seniors at rutgers were placed in new york uh, my internship was in new jersey so i thought the location had that advantage uh, yeah that's why i chose rutgers sure definitely no that sounds good actually <laughs> because when you graduated you already have multiple job offers so that's that's good actually um yeah, I, i'm yeah. i'm just curious like what courses that uh, rajas uh, quant finance program offered like um, if you can tell the tell tell me like what all courses you did so i would highlight a few important courses which i did and which really uh, made me fall in love with quant finance first one which i did was uh, optimization models in finance by ruzwinski and i think that is one of the best course to do at rutgers under ruzwinski it teaches you about uh, what is uh, uh, like which are the different optimization models we have uh, how does uh, uh, the uh, concavity work how does convexity work what are convex functions and 
I got introduced to a lot of theory in uh, quant finance, which which kind of helped me in the future mathematical subjects quant finance has to offer, uh, like say stochastic calculus or uh, numerical analysis. So optimization models in finance, I took it in my first semester, which gave me a strong base to mathematical finance. Uh, other than that, I would say uh, we had fixed income uh, and fixed income was taught by someone who is also already a, a quant guy. So uh, it was pretty nice because it was industry relevant. He had worked in industry before. He had he had did his master uh, MBA from India. So it was uh, his name was Priyanka Gandhi. So that professor uh, really gave us like the fixed income aspects, but for a uh, bank or for Wall Street. So most of the examples covered in the class, most of the assignments covered in the class were like, okay, you are an analyst at Wall Street and now you have to solve this problem. So it was pretty nice, uh, you know, like I got introduced to uh, a lot of uh, Wall Street terminologies of finance in that class. Uh, a very industry relevant course, I would say. Uh, so one of my favorite course to do was fixed income. Uh, then I would say derivatives was a nice introductory course. Uh, uh, pretty much similar to CFA, but more in depth about the mathematical aspects of it. Uh, later in my uh, master's, I would say financial time series was a very important course for me. Uh, I didn't know anything about time series and I think that course taught me a lot. Uh, then uh, there was this course called Risk Management uh, by Professor Naoma. That was one of my favorite course in my third semester because that was really mathematical. Uh, it was not uh, like most quant jobs are into risk management these days. And I thought that is very vital for me to understand how the mathematical modeling of risk works. So that was again, a very nice course, which I would recommend students to take, uh, being always a bit skeptical about uh, coding, uh, didn't know coding from before, but still wanted to challenge myself. And hence I took a course called machine learning for finance, very coding heavy course. Uh, the best part of it was we used to code in class in front of the professor, uh, a lot of good assignments to code and most of the programming which I've learned up till now is from that class. So machine learning for finance was very uh, nice uh, course to do and most like it it helped me the most in it, my interviews. Uh, numerical analysis by Professor Ovoma that was again a, a very important course for interviews as well as in my current job. So I would say uh, optimization models in finance, uh, fixed income, uh, derivatives, financial time series, risk management, numerical analysis. These were some of the uh, highlight courses. Stochastic calculus, yes. Uh, any financial math guy has to do stochastic calculus. Mm, it was not asked in much of the interviews, but now when I am working in counterparty credit risk, uh, stochastic calculus, like you cannot stay away from stochastic calculus. So I think stochastic calculus was very, very important and well-taught course uh, for my uh, master's. I guess uh, NC State and Redgers have, I guess, the same kind of curriculum because we were also ta taught risk management, financial risk management, fixed income, derivatives, then I guess um, stochastic calculus, Monte Carlo simulation. Then we had the statistical inference which taught, which, you know, teaches about you, the the statistics part of it. So so I guess a lot of common subjects, which is which is good, I believe. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. coming like uh, I I just wanted to ask like because you did so many courses, right? I'm I'm very sure that uh, you have you would have done multiple projects um in in your yeah. masters. So like what what projects you know? But because you were interviewing also, so what do you think like what projects were helpful during your masters, which really helped you in the interview process? I would I would say uh uh. I did 15 courses in my master's and out of those 15 courses, I would say uh, in 10 or 12 courses, we did projects. So I had a lot of projects for my CV to fill in, uh, in that for a particular role, uh, uh, because, uh, you know, like, uh, if you are applying for a trading position, you have different projects. If you're applying for a risk position, you have different projects. If you're applying for a model development position, you have different projects. So most of my projects were scattered around uh, a particular uh, uh, branch of quant finance. Uh, but the most projects which helped me, like for at least for my current job, the projects which uh, ha really helped me were the projects which I did in uh, machine learning because there was a lot of statistics involved. Uh, my current job is model development. So uh, it's a model development rotation program. So a lot of statistics is involved. A lot of machine learning is involved, which they ask you in your interviews. 
so that machine learning for finance uh, a lot of courses of machine learning actually helped me you know elastic net random forest lasso uh, gra gradient boosting kind of building models around it and understanding how the model selection or the feature selection is taking place uh secondly i would say the courses like some of the projects which i did in my fixed income uh, really helped me uh what is the present value of the fixed leg what is the present value of the floating leg uh, there was a huge project on that uh how do you model those uh, small interest rates uh, uh what are the interest rate curves so projects based on that for fixed income really helped uh, which were in my cv uh, apart from that i would say we did a risk management project uh, kind of probability of default loss given default exposure at default uh, and that was really helpful for the interview uh, for at least for my interviews i didn't give many interviews because uh, i got through uh, in the first place where i applied so after that i didn't give uh, much interviews so i would say uh, mostly the projects in machine learning uh, fixed income and uh, projects in risk because my particular my role i wanted to go into model development so like uh, did you also had anything related to market risk projects on market risk or projects yeah. on derivatives no uh, like i didn't have a project on derivatives in my cv uh, mostly yeah i didn't have a project on market risk or derivatives in my cv okay understood understood so yeah also like um, so because uh, like how did you study for your whole interview process because i feel like we are taught so many different subjects in our masters you know lot of students they struggle with you know which which subject should i study how much debt depth should i go so you know all these questions you know like even a lot of students ask me you know which i mean how did you make your you know study plan for your interviews i i think most of the study plan in the interview uh, for interview happened in the class uh, first thing which i did was i my attendance was 100% so i attended every class in the masters of quant finance program i rarely i would have missed one class somewhere or the other but most of the time my attendance was 100% for each and every class so i would say uh, that really helped because uh, when you hear professors teach particular topics or say particular things even if you have noted it down and you might have the notes but it kind of uh, you write it in your head also so that helped me a lot in the interview because when i was speaking in the interview i realized that i'm speaking the same way or the same words my professor was speaking so firstly like i attended all classes which which is where the most preparation happened secondly i would say uh, uh i didn't read uh, any particular book for interviews like there is a mark joshi book on quant finance there is green book uh, but i did solve probability questions from green book uh, but most of it was quite similar to what we do in india in our uh, engineering or uh, for uh, je preparations so focusing on those probability questions which we did for je or which we did in our uh, undergrad in vit we did a lot of like we did have probability and statistics so focusing on those pro that probability and statistics uh, just to clear uh, particular interviews and then i would say for the theory part of quant finance it was mostly the class notes i didn't uh, go anywhere else from the class notes i just followed class notes rigorously and if i had any doubts i would just ask my professors but uh, mostly it was class notes uh, okay. and probability and statistics maybe from green book and some from uh, je prep yeah okay understood understood um so i guess uh, that was uh, like these were the questions that i had in mind uh, any other guidance which you want to give to current quant aspirants you know because a lot of them they want to come from india to united states so let's say there are a lot of students who are currently pursuing masters in united states like any guidance you want to give to them yeah yeah for like for sure for students who are in india who want to come for their masters uh make sure that you know like the program fits your budget uh like if you have a particular budget for loan uh make sure that okay you can apply for program which have uh, a bit smaller like bit lesser amount of fees because there are 20 programs in the us if you get into any in the top 15 uh, like say nc state rutgers uh, georgia tech it's the choice like and no matter where you go uh, you have to do your effort so i don't think there is a particular choice go for the program which kind of suits you which might have lesser fees uh, once it's a decent program once it's in top 15 top 20 i don't think uh, 
anything else would have to be a choice so i want a particular program in top 5 top 3 but then you have to pay a lot of fees for that so if you are taking a loan just think about the interest rate which gets compounded on that loan and then i don't know how the interest rate environment would be like when you graduate so be uh, cautious about how much loan you are taking or uh, how much the program fees are secondly i would say for students who, who are here for their masters or just starting their going to start their masters in fall or in their spring right now attend all classes you know you are paying 60 70000 dollars for these programs so attend all classes uh teacher is not good enough just attend the class it's okay make notes you'll at least learn something from that hour or two hours of classes you have so second that that would be my advice third would be uh for job applications make sure that there should not be any job on your, your linkedin page where you have not applied to apply for all jobs make sure you get proper referrals or make sure you get through uh, the hiring manager and get his contact details or make your way through that your resume reaches that hiring manager uh if your uh, campuses have career fair make sure you attend them reach out to them after that do proper networking i got my job out of career fair uh i got the internship out of career fair so it's very important for you guys if there is career fair organized by your university go for it talk to them ask them questions and make sure your resume reaches the hiring manager yeah and uh, your... apart from that yeah. one, apart from that once you graduate Uh, like me who try to give it back to the quant community in any way possible thank you thank you thank you so much akshay it was nice having you on the podcast because i feel like this is actually this is the best way we can teach our juniors or someone who's sitting in india because few years down the line like few years back if you see we also had the same question you know which university to select should i go to yeah. a, a university in new york which has like a very high you know fees or should i to some other university so definitely this uh, such things really help a lot of uh, contest parents so i really want to thank you for having on the show and thank you so much for sharing your valuable guidance thank you mehul and it's a great initiative which you are doing for the quant community thanks a lot keep doing it more power to you so thank you thank you bye bye akshay thank you bye bye